Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of KJF Fishing. Today we're going to be tying some spinner rigs for walleye, and I'm not going to talk too much, so let's get into it. Before we hop into the video, I'm going to show you guys what I use to tie spinner rigs. So I use some Berkley Trilene 17 pound monofilament line. I'll use some octopus hooks, or I'll also use slow death. Um, I'll use... For blades, I'll use spinning glows, smiley blades, Colorado blades, Indiana blades, and I will also use willow leaf blades. Um, if I'm using a heavier rig, I will throw on a floater right in the middle of my beads that I also need. So if I'm using a heavier rig, I'll throw one of these on in the middle so they can actually stay off the bottom. And I'll also use some quick change clevises. I like those because if you're on the go, you can change your blades out really quick. So yeah, let's hop into the So bait. first step, you want to get your line. You want to cut off about four feet. I usually measure it by an arm's length. So I'll go like that and I'll cut it. I've already cut it. So that's about four to five feet you want. And then you want to straighten your line out. Because it will be really coily once you take it off. Just go really nice and slow. The heat of your fingers will make the line straight. And then it's all nice and straight. At this point, you can begin tying your hooks onto the line. Take the line, doesn't matter what end. Take your hook, whatever hand you like. I hold it like this. I just hold it just like that. Um, I take my line one of the ends and I put it through the very top through the very top of that so I put it through and then you can see on the back how I have some extra line give yourself some line don't try and short yourself line it just makes it more difficult um, so you wanna give yourself line and now you can see it is on the back of the shank of the hook you wanna keep that tight hold it with this and then you're gonna do about nine to ten wraps on the bottom hook and they don't want to overlap don't try and overlap them so one two three four five six seven eight nine if you guys can see that ah. there you go you can guys can kind of see that it won't really focus but then you're going to take your other line of the, your other end of the line and then you're gonna put it through the back the back side of the hook Whoa. there we go that took a little while and then you're before you pull it I usually will take my fingernail or my just finger and I'll push the line to the eye of the hook so it's already nice and tight and then you want to pull it tight, just like that. So now you have a nice secure knot. You still have that tag end. Don't trim that yet. You'll do that later. And then your second hook. You're going to go. I'll go usually about that far from the second hook. And then I do about seven to eight wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing, take your fingernail, slide the line up on the, to the eye, and then take your line, put it through the back. And there you go. Make things all tight. Now we can move on to our next step. Okay, 
so after we have the hooks tied, we're going to move on to putting on beads, floaters if needed, and different kinds of blades. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to do four different blades, spinning lows, smiley blades, Colorado blades, and Indiana blades. Um, each one, depending on the size, requ requires a different amount of beads. So we're going to start off with the Colorado blade. Once you have your blade picked out, this is a Colorado blade. This is the one I'll be using first in the first demonstration. Um, you're wanting to pick out some beads. So I've picked out the pattern gold, silver, silver, gold. So I'm going to be putting on, for the smaller blade, I'm going to put on four to five beads for it. So once you have all your beads that you want threaded on, you're going to take a quick change clevis. And that looks like that. If you don't know, you can buy them really anywhere. Canadian Tire. I I suggest buying them bulk. They're much cheaper. Um, also, when you're putting on your quick change clevis, there is a little trick. Not putting it on, but putting it on the right way. So, as you can see, how I have it on, the end of the line I have it on, is like this so I slid it on that way you want the opening of the face shooting up you don't want the opening going down you always want it going up so once you put that on you want to take another bead and put it on over that it's optional you don't have to it's just what I like to do so then this is what it looks like when you're done and now you just got to attach your blade so a Colorado blade right here, it's attached on. Uh, what, what you want to look for and how you know it's too big of a blade for the beads is if you can't see the bottom of one of the beads like I can, I can see that very bottom gold one, your blade has a chance of hitting the hook right here and it will cause problems with how it spins and not. So you want to make sure you have enough beads. You could even put on another bead. So I have five right here. You could go with six for a smaller blade. And that is for the smaller Colorado blade. I'll now show you guys how to do the bigger Colorado uh, blade. For the bigger Colorado blade, you are wanting to go, you can go whatever pattern you want. I'm gonna use the same one. Gold, silver, silver, gold. But this time, instead of only putting on five of of the beads, I'm going to put on three beads on the bottom, three beads on the bottom. So right now I have it like, like this. And now I'm going to bring in one of these floaties and I'm, there's no special way to run these on. You just put them on and then on top of that, so now it's like that. So three beads, a floater, and then I'm going to put two more beads on top of that. So gold, silver. So now it looks like that. If you guys can see that, there you go. So now it looks like that. Now you're gonna take your quick change clevis or whatever clevis you have and you're gonna put it on in a special way. So I have the opening up right now and I'm going to put the line through the bottom just like so and I'm going to slide that down and I'm going to throw on another bead just on top so there you go so I still have six beads I have six beads and a floater so that floater is just going to help this heavier rig stay off the bottom and then you're going to want to attach your blade obviously that would help a little bit catch fish oh, if I could so there you go so as you can see I have a lot of room to spare so you could even go down one bead it depends on the size of your beads but yeah that is what that one looks like so that is for the bigger Colorado now I will show you the Indiana blade 
Um, actually, I'll just tell you guys, the in Indiana blade, exact same as the Colorado blade. Just make sure that you have enough beads so this isn't hitting on the bottom. And also, for the Indiana blade, you don't need a floater. You can just go with beads. And now I will show you guys a spin glow. Alright, for a spin glow, you're going to want, this is how I do it. Uh, you don't need a clevis. Uh, you need beads and the spin glow. That's it. That's it. Um, so I'm going to go with the pattern gold. That is the only color I'm going to be using. So the way I usually will do it, I will usually, you can go from one to however many beads you want. I would, the max I would say is three beads on the bottom, but I am going to go with two on the bottom, two on the bottom, and then, so I have it just like, like that right now, it's two beads on the bottom. And then the way to put this on is you want the flat part facing this way. So you have your line and you're going to stick it through the bottom. And out comes the line. Now you're going to have it like this. So you're going to have your spin glow, your beads on the bottom. And then I am going to put another, another bead on top of that spin glow. Just like that. There you go. And that's how you do that spin glow. And now I will show you guys how to do the last blade I have, the smiley blade. The smiley blade. I'm going to do the pattern of silver. You can do whatever you want. Um, you're going to want a minimum of about three beads. That's how many I do. At least three beads depending on the size of the blade. If you have a small blade, you're going to want at least three. If you're doing a bigger smiley blade, you're going to want about four at, at the minimum. Um, so one more bead. And the smiley blades and the spinglows, they don't require a clevis, so you don't have to hassle with one of those. Smiley blade, can go on just like this and then you just slide it down and then I do put a bead over top of it and so now you have four beads on the bottom one on the top and your smiley blade in between so yeah just just like that and now I will show you the knot I use for the swivel. Okay. Now we'll be tying the knot. Um, so you're wanting to take the line on the end without the hooks, obviously. Take a swivel, a barrel swivel, any kind of swivel you want. I use a barrel swivel so the line does not get twisted. Um, then you're going to take the line. How I do it is put it through the eye. And then I pinch the swivel, so I lay it on my finger, like that, and then I pinch it, and then I put my pointer finger right, right in the middle. I'll show you why in a second. You gotta get some tight. So now you're gonna go eight wraps. Just need to put some pressure on the line. It seems to help. So eight wraps. One, two three, four, five, actually you can go anywhere from six to eight wraps. I'll go usually six, depending on the monofilament test I'm using. And then you see that my pointer finger, why I kept it in, you want to go back through that hole. So it's back through there. And then you want to go back through that. There is a lot of uh, pictures that you can see that might have been a little confusing. But after you have that, you're wanting to moisten it. And then pull. You want to moisten it so you don't have the monofilament cutting into itself. And then a lot of people, they'll just cinch down on it. I, I still don't think that moistening it is enough. 
So I'll take my fingernail and I'll just slide it down, tighten, slide it down, tighten it up, and then you can test your knot, make sure it's all good. And now take the pressure off it. If you need pressure, I it just seems easier for me to tie the knot. Now you're wanting to trim your ends. So you take your scissors or your clippers. A lot of people will cut it right at the knot. I don't like doing that for one reason. It's the, the people say that the fish can see this knot. I would disagree. You have about, say, however many more feet of the exact same line out. So I cut it right there. So it ends at the very start of the turn of the shank. And so that's for that end. And then same thing for the place with the swivel. I usually will go about this far from the swivel, just like that. And there you go. That is how you tie a walleye spinner rig for a Colorado blade, an Indiana blade, a smiley blade, and a spin glow. If you guys have any sort of questions, just drop them down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. Other than that, please share this video, like it, and subscribe. Other than that, have a good day.